Hello and welcome again to the Crazy Angels podcast. I'm with Pascal Dennis and David Logan. Today we want to talk about a song from album three, Shame on the Sun, and it's called Banks and Churches. This song is about the effects of big tech on our lives today and the world we live in. Pascal, can you give us an introduction to what this song means to you? We love uh, technology in our podcast. It enables the podcast, it enables our international band. So we don't want to be misunderstood. We like technology, but technology is getting oppressive. And I'll read a piece from uh, the great uh, culture critic, Ted Joya, on his Substack channel. It's called 52 Reasons to Fear That Tech Progress is Reversing. Somehow Silicon Valley went rancid, and it happened in just the last few years. Not long ago, I was ardent defender of tech. I admired many tech leaders, especially Steve Jobs, who had the temperament of an artist. And I used the latest innovations myself and benefited from them. And I think our whole enterprise agrees with that. But then something changed, said Ted. And in the near future, I'll diagnose what happened and why. And I'll share a plan for countering the decay. But today, let's look at the symptoms. And he names 52 symptoms of rot. I see it on almost every web platform, every branch of technology. Options disappear, constraints increase, good things get worse, stuff stops working. Now, what I observe, and one of the reasons I wrote this song is, uh, I observe that many of the old ways that tech has obsolesced had a beauty and a dignity and a humanity to them. So um, banks were places that you'd go and you'd chat with uh, the bank manager or the advisor or the teller. Yeah, and, and they would get to know you and literally build trust. So when you wanted a loan, part of the way they determined that was by your character. And now it's just numbers on a spreadsheet. Yeah. Same with uh, the church or the synagogue or the temple. Uh, it was a place people got together and told stories, shared experiences, developed a shared understanding what it's like to be human. And uh, these fragile networks of humanity, these relationships have all been obsolesced by big tech. And it's not always a an improvement. So now you see families uh, at the dinner table and everybody's looking at their smartphone. Um, kids are lonely, they're isolated, depression, even you know, self-harm, even suicide has spiked. And th there are a number of books that have been written and released. And if I may comment, uh, I agree with Ted Joya, the great culture critic I quoted earlier, big tech is no longer on our side. And um, uh, increasingly they, they alienate and they uh, damage our psyches, they damage our families, our connections. Um, many of those businesses are built on addiction, built on swipes and scrolling. And the more we swipe, the more we scroll, the higher their market cap is. So it's uh, a serious situation and um, we need to be aware of it and somehow reclaim our humanity. One of our underlying themes on this podcast is that people are doing so and are going to uh, uh, do so in a greater and greater way. way. We're going to re reject the dead hand of big tech. And uh, I think we're entering a new era of romanticism based on the human, on connection, on um, those ways of thinking, ways of being, ways of connecting that we, we've lost. So anyway, end of sermon. Uh, that's what this song is about. The arrangement, as always, is magnificent. And I'll, I'll pass the baton to, to David. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's let's have a listen here. Banks and churches. Life reverses and disperses Where have the tellers gone? The choir's happy song Starbucks and condos line streets of Toronto Why am I feeling blue? 
just a different point of view. Goodbye, Hogtown. Hello, Brigadoon. Books and pay phones. Pads and iPhones. That's a little bit of that. And, um, yeah, as far as, you know, the arrangement went, it, it was really just Davide um, really interacting. And it's, 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 I guess it's, I don't know if it's interesting, but I was going to say it's interesting. It's interesting <laughs> to me, damn it. Um, the relationship, like relationships can be built, you know, over the Internet. You know, when, when people say things like, oh, well, in real life, it's like, well, this is the real life. Like, <laughs> you listening to this podcast or watching this, you know, like, this is real life. You're getting something real. There are three real, authentic human beings that are communicating their ideas over the web. This is real life. So relationships build, you know, they come to understand the music um the lyrics um sometimes the lyrics are you know very different experience um this is a specific to toronto kind of an experience as i mentioned in italy they'll never sell churches and convert them <laughs> into residents <laughs> like italians would just be like what they did what in toronto are you joking me <sighs> so anyway you know there's a relationship here um, between Davide and Pascal. If you just listen, mm -hmm. um, let's go where Pascal comes in. Banks and churches. See, the space is getting filled. Life reverses and disperses. Space, where intentionally. Where the teller's gone. The choir's happy song Starbucks and condos Line streets of Toronto Why am I feeling blue? Just a different point of view Goodbye, Hogtown Hello, Brigadoon so you see there, there's this little, like some spaces are just left intentionally, others yep. are filled, and this is the spontaneous will of Davide, and I have nothing to do with it. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, um, I, I sort of stopped coaching him after the second album. He was sort of like, now he, t he totally gets it. Well, I, if I may say, I always leave space for yeah, those yeah, strings yeah. for davide's yep. incredible piano yep. for julio or lucas guitar yeah, yeah, yeah. so that it's great communication is back and forth so i i i write a song with that in mind yeah no 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 for sure and it, we love it <laughs> so here's some of the the string lines books and pay phones you don't pads and it's, iPhones. It's not like, what's your birthstone? It's it's not obvious that there are pizzicato strings in there. So yeah, this is just a very simple um, you know, and we, we always try to humanize it. Like as you can see here, there's this arc going up and down. This is called modulation. And so if we just open that track up and we just look at the modulation. This mm -hmm. is human, right? This is a human modulation. And, um, you know, again, just to, to kind of give you a rough idea here, um, if we just go over here and uh, let's just grab some strings. So, yeah, here, here would be, this would be my, my modulation here. So if I just play simple. You know, So this is this is how we humanize everything we do, right? Because, you know, 
this is this all these records are, are not being funded by <laughs> major record labels right so we don't have a million dollar budget <laughs> um you know to go record live strings everywhere so when we do put strings in we're we're trying to give it the most human touch you know and you know so many people always say, oh, do you really need all those buttons and sliders on you? It's like, actually, yes, I do. <laughs> they all do different things, and I know what they all do. I just can't figure out this one button here. But all the other buttons I know, it's just the one. Just that, that that's studio humor, by the way. <laughs> so that's it. If I can comment, one of the things uh, I love about this arrangement and about the song is that it's informed by... Uh, the great American songbook, and especially the show tune that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, graced American stages largely and was influenced and based on opera, I'm sure. So this idea of a character in some kind of anguish or joy or some intense emotional state with just a spotlight, just pouring their heart out. Uh, it's a very beautiful image, you know, and uh, it uh, the first time I saw it, I think I was a little kid watching Pagliacci, you know, the great opera and there was uh the man in the clown suit pouring his heart out with just a single spotlight so this is that kind of a song and you catch it uh david you and the band create that that feeling that magic moment where someone is communicating intensely something intensely your voice your personal, voice is also you know? your voice is also delivering right so don't don't underestimate your voice well, yeah. I felt it. No, I felt it. Yeah, yeah I really, did. I really felt yeah. behind the song. Yeah.